the tires on the bus screeched to a halt, signifying that it was my time to get off. I collected my things and exited the vehicle. The nauseous fumes spewing from the exhaust pipe wafted in my face and nearly knocked the air from my lungs as it sped off leaving me alone. One look around at Vicksburg and I could see why its reputation was not the best. The town was an ancient relic of the past. Dozens of houses were dilapidated with speckles of paint chipping away and flaking off like dandruff. The walls had caved in over time to where the roofs were barely hanging on by a thread. I passed by buildings that were scorched down to the wood and abandoned to the wrath of Mother Nature. Moss grew along the sides of brick walls and rats ran rampant through the streets, the cold. Crisp air smacked me on the nape of my neck, sending a shiver up my spine. The grass in the city was totally dead and blackened. Any scarce shrubs and trees there were, they were winding and fatally emaciated. I had arrived at Vicksburg get around for in the morning, so my best initiative was to find a place to stay. I walked down an isolated road with the slightest sense I was being watched from afar, and any time I tried looking in the opposite direction, they would scuttle off. It was hard to believe that anyone would live here, let alone that Walter and the other gentlemen would be compelled to come. Columns held buildings up, but the slightest poke would make them crumble. Mud and other debris were flung on the windows, obscuring me from peering inside, almost as if they wanted it that way. The state of disrepair also extended to the roads and walking paths, with spindly cracks scattered throughout. I traveled down the square of the town, seeing several small businesses denoting some of the products you would expect to purchase, like canned goods or bread. The light posts were faintly lit, reminding me of twilight, with the sun's rays partially illuminating the atmosphere, a perfect combination wherein it was neither too dark nor completely lit. In the middle of the square was a large fountain, with the sculpture of a scantily clad woman calling to mind those Roman statues. Despite being made from stone, her long locks of hair flowed in the wind. Murky, terry water poured down from a pot she was holding. Upon a closer look, Tiny hints of algae coated the rocky surface adding to its prehistoric state. After taking in the whole picture of the fountain's condition, my attention became directed towards the hotel as with the other structures. The hotel had seen better days, having long since fallen into a decrepit state of disarray. Its name rubbed off the sign to where I could vaguely make out a few letters. The paint peeled away from the foundation, giving it a hideous, ghastly appearance. Newspapers padded the windows, and nasty smoke drifted from the chimney. There were a few areas where the bricks were punched out and smashed on the ground below. With nowhere else to turn to, I entered the establishment. The scent of decay slammed into my face like a sledgehammer to the head. So much dust accumulated on the furniture and door it shot up in the air. The musky debris made my nose recoil in disgust, coughing. I scanned the surroundings to chairs with bare backs lined a shaggy rug that became green from the moss residing on it. Photos decked the walls some dating back to the 1800s and eroded over time due to the improper maintenance. I approached the service desk spotting a book on the desk. Heavy layers of dust coated the surface. I looked past the desk noticing copious amounts of cobwebs. 
dangling from the bookshelves and ceiling, a small bell lay beside the journal. Weighing my options again, I tentatively pressed the knob. H.M. Nothing. I tapped my fingers on my briefcase and waited a few seconds. I rang the bell again after ten seconds passed. Still no one stirred from the faint sound. I stared at my wristwatch, seeing that it was almost five. Perhaps if I was more assertive, I could somehow convince a citizen of this town to offer me a place to stay as I turned to leave. I finally heard a commotion. Good morning, sir. I turned to the desk again, my eyes beholding a peculiar man. Strange. I did not hear him walk behind the service desk again. Judging by how sudden his appearance was, he practically manifested or could he have been hiding on the floor the whole time? I internally understood people's apprehension. For the physical features of a Vicksburg citizen, the gentleman was pale, deathly so. His skin lacked any ounce of pigmentation, looking more like a reanimated corpse. Not one speck of hair was on his slick body, with his cranium briefly illuminated under the faint light. His eyes, however, were the most jarring attribute. They were as black as a starless sky darker than the pitch-black void. I was uncertain if it was a result of his pupils expanding to collect more light, or if his irises were naturally black. He seemed to notice my repulsion of his peepers, so he tried offering me a smile, except it was the furthest thing from a smile, more a poor man's replication of one. He possessed a row of sharp, jagged teeth that, when parted, only reveal the jet of inky nothingness at the back of his throat. He spoke in a low, guttural voice somehow sounding distant and yet still close he arched his head to the sigh, analyzing the subtlest of my movements. Welcome to our town, sir. There was nothing more that I wanted than to end the conversation and get the hell out of Dodge, but where would I go? I tried to muster up as much politeness as I could. I would like a room. The enigmatic man's eyes widened more. I felt that he was staring into the recesses of my soul and got his jollies from frightening me. Very good, sir. His long, skeletal fingers croaked the journal. How much is a room for the night? Oh, no need for payment. He chuckled. Purple goo glistened on his yellow stained teeth and landed on the desk. You don't have to pay a single dime. Really? That would be great. Not once during our discussion did the gentleman ever blink. If anything, he would freeze up temporarily and just glare at me like a record that has the issue of skipping. Before resuming, his body moved in a wobbly, drunken stupor with his knees buckling and jerking. Did he even have a pair of feet hidden behind the counter? He pushed the journal to me and handed me a pen. Once I opened the book, I immediately knew something was amiss. Walter Bean? Ah, uh, yes, he visited this same hotel. We like to keep their names and addresses for documentation. Well, it says that he signed this exactly two weeks ago. Walter has been missing for a long time. This was the place he was last seen, isn't it? The man leaned in looking at me with his black holes for our eyes. I assure you that you have nothing to worry about. For all intended purposes, we are not allowed to disclose our client's private information. Drat, he was not budging. I could argue with him for hours and hours, but I was not mentally willing to do so. I shrugged and sighed in defeat. So, just sign my name and address, right? 
Very good, sir. I jotted down my signature and address and closed the book. This town is something else. Whatever do you mean? Just in a total state of disrepair. Hardly any birds or other animals aside from rats, and everything seems so bleak. He chuckled again, hearing my complaints. You sound like you are starving for some entertainment. Without saying anything further, he disappeared almost as quickly as he did manifest. Before I could question him on his sudden interest, he returned holding a flyer in his hand. Tell me, are you alone? Alone? Why is that crucial information? Normally I would be put off by that sort of invasive question, but I decided to play along. I am single, yes. The gentleman's smile widened, purple fluid rolling down his mouth in thick layers. Perhaps this would be of interest to you. He handed me the flyer. My eyes skimmed the piece of paper with the words, Vicksburg's annual mix and mingle. A dating game? He jerked a bit, giving a firm grip on his arm. His frail fingers reached out for the flyer in hopes of reclaiming it, but his grip tightened, forcing him to reel back. There was visible hurt on his face, as if he was conflicted with revealing the occasion to me. He hissed under his breath before the internal conflict resolved itself. It is a tradition we have here in our little town. And is it the only thing to do here? Nothing like a movie theater or anything else that grandiose. He did not know what I was babbling about. Never mind. I'll keep this in mind. The tips of the employee's mouth curled. You won't regret this. With nothing more to say, he pulled the key off the hook and dropped it in my open palm. Enjoy your stay, sir. Nodding, I started the long ascent up the stairs while I left. I heard a shrill voice whispering maliciously at the man. It was so low, however that I could not make out what the heated words were. Come to think of it, I didn't recall seeing anyone else at the hotel. The wooden planks creaked under my feet while I approached my room. More dust settled along the rails of the stairs while I waited for the man. I did sneak a peek at one photo that said the hotel was established three centuries ago. You would think that during all that time, they would consider some renovations from the erosion over the centuries. Large gaping holes form on the floorboards threatening to swallow up any poor, sap unaware of their presence. Room three. I opened the door and in doing so, several cockroaches scuttered out, peeping inside. It was a relieving sight to see that room. Even though it was old, looked presentable. I settled down on the bed's cover, not daring to even see what was underneath. Later that day, once I had settled in, I would have to meet up to discuss my business with the higher-ups while thinking about it. My eyes wandered back to the flyer and Walter's disappearance. I knew damn well that the employee was lying through his mustard teeth, thinking back. Not only was Walter's name and address listed, but so were the other men that Jacques had reported missing. All of them arrived at the hotel at some point, but they never checked out. I made a mental note to contact the private I soon. As I settled into bed, my mind continued to worry at the thought of partaking in the annual dating game. Why was the man so insistent on me attending it? 